I've been with Airsoft GI for a little over a month now, but they must really want to prove something to me, especially since this just arrived at my house. Do you remember this gun? We saw it for the first time when I was at SHOT Show 2017. This is the GNG CM16 ARP9, and this is the only one out there for anyone to review, so I will take the trophy for being the first to review one, so maybe I can show you guys what's to come in the next month or two. I'll be sure to leave links in the description down below so you can pre-order this piece right now or buy it on airsoftgi.com if you're interested after this review. But let's see what makes this piece different from whatever I've reviewed before, and since there's no proper box to go through, I can get right to the ARP9. Weighing about 5 pounds, this is just one of many upcoming releases from G&G, and as I can tell, this is probably the most hyped one. Starting up front, this G&G, or Gui Gui, comes with a very different metal cookie cutter like flash hider that should be blaze orange. That is, if you get one in the US. This flash hider is combined with the short barrel, which does amplify the feedback of this gun, so if you like loud AEGs, then here's something to look at. M-Lock setups are starting to get really popular in Airsoft, just like how Keymod did, so are you at all surprised by the 5-inch metal mil-spec M-Lock rail on here? I don't happen to own any M-Lock accessories, so I'll just leave this gun void of any mods, but I do like how solid this rail is. It's all metal, and the top rail integrates neatly with the polymer body, and it's fully licensed, so it's trademarked properly. The flip-up metal iron sights sit on top of the rail, and they look pretty good. The dials aren't too stiff, and the sight picture is clean, but you could always remove them for whatever sights you may have. Next up, let me go over the magazine that's released by this AK style paddle, but to insert it back into place, you may have to really push it up into the ARP9. That's not something I'm all too happy about, so I thought I'd mention it. The magazine is polymer, and it is quite long and skinny as a 9mm replica high cap mag. I really hope that G&G plans on introducing some mid caps, and I've heard that they are, but this 300 round magazine is okay. It's not amazing, as I had to wind it up between like every 50 shots or so, but it worked. No jams and no double feeds. The base plate was also a bit wobbly, but that's pretty minor I guess. As for the rest of the controls, I'm pretty happy with them. The metal selector switch falls into place properly, so there's no problem. Semi works, Flauto works, and it stays in place. And with the full release, you'll get an ETU inside that'll allow you to change Flauto to burst fire like the other new style combat machines. As for the charging handle and mock bolt, I once again had no problem, but you'll need to hold the charging handle back to adjust your rotary style hop up. This hop up clicks into place as you turn it, so if you like this feature like I do, then now you know. To end off the notable features, the ARP9 comes with the PDW style stock that has its goods and its bads like anything else does. You only get two positions with this stock, but with it opened all the way, I was comfortable. But if you remove the stock completely, you'll be able to get to your battery connections easier. Just pull off this cap and there you go, small type connections with an inline MOSFET. This MOSFET makes trigger responses very snappy, and with the right lipo inside I could see some speed softers really enjoying this small gun, and the flat trigger on this piece only pushes that thought. Or if you like lightweight HPA guns, then this could be an option for your next build. As I mentioned, there's some goods and there's some bads about this stock, like how the butt pad is a bit too small for my taste, but that's a preference thing. And when extended, the stock has some wobble to it, but altogether it's a clean setup with a sling point out of the way of everything else. For the price of $210, I think this is something different from what's out there, but you might want to get the right pouches for this gun, or just conserve that high cap of yours as much as possible in the game. As for feet per second readings, I was not surprised to see these sub CQB numbers lending to why I'd recommend this gun for all types of CQB games. You have a light and small gun that just works well in those types of environments, especially with 150 to 200 foot ranges. Again, this is another great feature for this gun, great range and accuracy. As for creativeness, I like the ARP9. It's not something I'd want for myself, but I know people really like this gun. Maybe it's the curves, the compact build, the unique magazines, or maybe the range, but I can respect this as a viable option for heavy CQB games. Just make sure to pack a good 11.1 .1 lipo and some extra magazines, and then go to work with this super loud AEG that people will probably ask about after the game. I think I've said all that I can say here, but what do you think about the GNG CM16 ARP9? Do you like it or not? Let me know in the comments down below or ask whatever questions you may have so I can check them out and answer them. But be sure to check out the links in the description down below to airsoftgi.com so you can pre-order yours or buy it now. I'd also like to really thank you guys for all the new subscribers. We're going up like 120 or 140 subscribers every single day. So just as I was celebrating 50,000 subscribers, we're already at 51,000 subscribers. So I'd like to really thank you guys for all of the crazy support. But until that next video drops from the city of San Antonio. This has been Scott Holmbeck, and I'll be sure to see you all next time.